uh, E.J. Daigle, the Director of Robotics and Manufacturing at Dunwoody College Technology again. Uh, this would be the second video in a sequence of videos on the use of multi-SIM circuit design software uh, from National Instruments. We use this quite a bit in our electronics engineering technology, our basic electricity classes for all of our courses at Dunwoody, um, whether it be for electricians or electronics techs or automation techs or any of the above. Um, so this time I'm going to just kind of prove out Kirchhoff's current law using uh, a simple uh, combination circuit, a little bit, a little bit more complex than than our 101 series. So we'll call this the 102 series. Um, so I'm, again, I'm going to start out with a, a source, and uh, we'll go into a DC source again. So I have a DC power source. Hit OK. I'm going to just kind of stick with the standard 12 volts again. Um, also going to go ahead and grab DC ground. So we'll go ahead and grab that while we got it. And one of the interesting things I'm going to do this time is I'm going to just leave the DC ground open. And rather than tying the circuit back together with wires, I'm going to use a common ground for all the components that I'm going to insert in here. So there's one DC ground, two DC grounds, and three DC grounds. Um, close that out so I can get rid of that tool. The next thing I'll do, so that, those are all in my, my source uh, toolbox, but now I'm going to come over to my basic toolbox. And remember, as you're, as you're, you're watching these videos, you can always feel free to, to pause the video and, and kind of try to catch up to where I am if, if you fall behind or replay the video or whatever you have to do. Um, so this time I'm going to place a basic item. I'm going to go find a resistor. I think I'll select this 2K ohm. And remember that... Uh, this is what the, the resistor looks like. The footprint, if I was going to export this multi-SIM file into Ultiboard, the footprint would be based upon this IPC number, uh, 2221A uh, slash 2222, and this, this would actually uh, resort back to some uh, geometry of a footprint, uh, spacing for the leads, uh, pads, uh, surface mount, through hole, whatever the case may be. So let's grab that 2K ohm and throw them in here. Let's grab another 2K ohm, and we'll just go ahead and grab three 2K ohms. So I've got R1, R2, and R3, and then I'll I'll close out that that selected component because it'll just leave itself open. I'm going to go ahead and move this this one 2K ohm up here. I'm going to put R2 here and R3 here. Now I want to connect these kind of kind of vertically to their DC grounds, tie them together up here so that they uh, come up to a common R1 and back to the source. Uh, the current will flow down from the negative lead of the source, down through ground, up through ground into R2 and R3. It'll combine up here into R1 and then back to the positive source. But right now I can see that R2 and R3 are, are horizontal when I really would prefer to have them vertical. So what I'll do is I'll right click on R2 and I'll do a 90 degrees clockwise shift. I'll do the same thing to R3. And now those look good. Maybe I move them over a little bit, whatever I have to do. Connect up my DC grounds. Kind of just mousing over and clicking and dragging. Notice that R2 needs to be pulled over a little bit to line up with that. There we go, that looks good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get some meters here to try to be able to kind of show off Kirchhoff's current law, which basically says that the sum of the currents entering a node has to equal the sum of the currents exiting the node. Um, so we should be able to prove that here. Um, today I'm going to use a meter. So you'll see underneath your indicators, again, we got our, our place source, our place basic, our diodes, transistors, analog, digital, TTL, all that stuff. Um, but right now I'm going to go for an indicator. And I'm going to grab a, a vertical ammeter. So this is a horizontal, this is a vertical one with the V. And it gives, again, it gives you a little bit of a preview of the ANSI symbol. And I'll grab two of those. So I've got U1 and U2. Then I'm also going to grab a horizontal ammeter. And I'll put him there. And at this point, you might, you know, move some things around to make room if you need to. Again, if you want to move multiple items, you can just left-click and drag, kind of like a a big box around this and then when you grab one of them you're actually moving all of them so we'll hook up our one down to here we'll hook up our horizontal ammeter now notice one thing here um, we, we should just check to make sure all of our ammeters are appear to be going in correctly 
Uh, the positive should always be hooked up towards the positive side of the source. Negative should always be closest to ground. So these are all good. I mean, the opposite of this would be if I were to flip this vertically, positive would be closer to ground. That would be wrong. So let me flip that vertically back. So they all look like they're incorrectly. It's just a matter of wiring them all up. And now let's say that uh, I made a mistake. And the beauty of doing this on the computer is you don't have to rewire anything. You don't have to go find a new resistor out of your, you know, at Radio Shack or out of your parts kit or whatever. Um, you can just, let's say I wanted this to be a 1K ohm. So I can just double click on this. And instead of a 2K ohm, I can click and slide down to wherever the 1K ohm resistor is or up as necessary. There's my 1K. I hit OK. And now instead of a 2K there, I have a 1K. I, I didn't necessarily care what I had, but, but I wanted to at least be able to show you that that was a possibility to do that. Um, doing some simple math here, you know, if I was to kind of look at this right now, I would tell you that it looks like these two in parallel, two 2K ohm resistors in parallel, is an equivalent to a, to a 1K ohm resistor. So you have... Uh, you know, the equivalent of 1K here, 1K here. Um, so you've got 6 volts here, you've got 6 volts here. So 6 volts divided by 1,000 ohms means I'm expecting 6 milliamps of current on this meter here. Now Kirchhoff's current law would also tell me that if this is 6 milliamps, part of that current is being fed from here and part of it's being fed from here. Um, because these two legs are, are equal, the current should be split um, in half. So I should have 3 milliamps flowing up through here, 3 milliamps flowing up through here, which gives me 6 total milliamps flowing up through here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and go to my simulation up in the upper right hand corner. We've got this nice simulation button up here. Toggle the simulation switch. And what we're going to see is we're going to see the exact value of our current. You'll see that you have 6 milliamps of current right here, and you have 2.999 milliamps of current here, and 2.999 milliamps of current here. So obviously we have 3 milliamps, 3 milliamps, that add up to a total of 6 milliamps. So that works out great for us here. Appears that everything's working good. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you, I got a question during class, was you know, can we add text? Or can we add other things to this? Um, it's very simple to do that. You know, we could place uh, we could place some text if we wanted to here. You know, we could say uh, even if you just wanted some comments here, like uh, uh, you know, my name, uh, simple combination circuit, multi sim demo. But perhaps if you're out in industry, you might want to, uh, you know, actually put in somewhat of a title block there, you know. So today's date, which is 9-30-2012. And when you click away from that, you end up kind of just getting out of there. You can just kind of put that up in the upper right hand corner. Now you've got this nice little, you know, circuit that you've built. And you could go ahead and save it, uh, do whatever you want with it. But that's our simple combination circuit using multisim. I think I'll... I'll do one other quick thing just to just to kind of wrap all this back together again. Uh, just remember, if this is if well, what do we expect? This is six milliamps of current. What do we expect for a voltage here? Again, I could always take my multimeter. I could hook my multimeter up right here, kind of click. And if you want to if you want to control where that lead goes, just click again, and then you just go straight down. So there's one multimeter, XM1, and the neat thing about this is I can add as many of these as I want. So if I want to flip this a 90 degree clockwise, add a multimeter over here, and kind of control where my lead's going to place. There's one lead. There's the other lead. Now I've got two multimeters I can look at. Here's XMM1, and here's XMM2. So you've got to be careful that when you when you when you uh, when you simulate this, that you're actually looking at the right meter. I sometimes will put the meter closest to where I'm measuring. Um, in this case, it's a little bit tricky because I've got uh, a lot of action going on in here. But I might do something like this. And I might put this one over here. That way I won't get confused and think, oh, which one's which. And then as I run this, I'm expecting to see 6 volts here and 6 volts here. 
So this, this is a great representation of what's exactly going on in the circuit. I'm reading 6 volts across this 2k ohm resistor. We know it's in parallel with the other 2k ohm resistor, so if I was to put another meter here, it's the exact same story. I'm really reading across both of these have a 6 volt drop. This uh, R1 up here has a 6 volt drop of its own, and, and while you're running this, you can always move them around too. This is probably an even better place to put these meters because they're definitely out of the way. But you can see how everything's changing around. So that would be uh, Multisim 102. I'm going to name this on YouTube. And be feel, feel free to look for the next series. We'll start to maybe play around with some potentiometers, uh, LEDs, transistors, maybe some other cool stuff as we get into some of these other Multisim demos. Thank you.